part two of Nothing Fancy's multi-day backpacking gear review. There's a lot to talk about. You saw it in part one. I mean, it's a lot. Uh, left off talking about the Timber Ledge pants by L.L. Bean. Hey, honestly, as years go by, this may change. They may change the name, the type, and you may find similar pants. Uh, you don't have to necessarily go with the Timber Ledge pants, but a long continuous pant. Don't get the zip-off variety, by the way. I found the zippers totally break on you at the worst possible moment. I get just regular long pants with gusseted legs, and the timber ledge actually have snaps, too. Uh, I just love them. And they come in these really cool colors. This dark cinder color is awesome. Um, now, I'm a big fan, as you've seen, of Ella Bean. And by way of disclosure, I was an Ella Bean field tester for a number of years. But every piece of gear you're looking at, including the Anorak I just told you guys about, I bought. Um, that's because generally they didn't have my size. Um, I did field test this Anorak. They gave it to me years ago. I field tested it and I really loved it. Um, but they gave me an extra large and I wear talls. So I bought a tall uh, in a different colors. And it's pretty darn affordable too. Forgot to mention it also has a drawstring in there. So you can cinch it up. Um, really both in midsection and on the bottom. The Anorak by L.O. Bean is probably one of my favorite pieces of outdoor gear. I have buddies that also, um, I've turned uh, them onto it and they love it as well. Uh, I think I misspoke in part one. I told you that this is my base layer. My base layer being the one that's right next to my skin is actually different. That would be, of course, synthetic underwear, Thermax variety, polyester, something along these lines. These would be some examples of that of course, and that's going to not hold moisture, prevent you from getting chafed. Uh, trust me, uh, when you're 15 miles in the backcountry, if you get rashes, chafing, blisters, you're going to be in a world of hurt. I've seen it, uh, and I've experienced some of it myself. So having the right gear that prevents that is important. And this would be actually my temperate weather base layer, so just parasynthetic underwear. Now, um, even when if it's really cold, I'll probably just be wearing underwear and those timber ledge pants. Once I stop moving, then I change my base layer. I'll probably keep these on, but then I'll go to a set of Thermax long johns or polyester. Just depends. These are ones I got on clearance from Sierra Trading Post years ago, and they were the EMS brand. EMS, by the way, makes some awesome stuff. Why is that marked off? Because uh, it was a clearance thing through CR Trading Post, and so they're supposed to, like, occlude the brand. And if I put these on under the timber ledge, I'm good down to probably, I don't know, 32 degrees, 35 degrees if I'm doing some movement. If it gets much colder than that, then I'll go heavier. And then these are heavyweight type long johns. I forget the brand, but you can see the waffle pattern on them. They're going to hold and trap more warm air. Will I take these on a normal backpacking trip? Well, it just depends. They are heavier. Generally not. Uh, generally a winter camp is when these will come with me. And in most conditions, these will be fine when coupled with my Timberledge pants. And back to the base layer on the top, then I go with a Thermax Henley. A Henley, by the way, is just a t-shirt that has some buttons on the top that allows you to ventilate it a little bit better. And these are some of my favorites. And uh, I've been using these two sets for years. And, again, I got these at SierraTradingPost.com on clearance. I think they were all of 8 bucks a piece, maybe 12 bucks. And let's see what brand they are. I guess this one's Polar Max. So don't get too hung up on the brand. Uh, just the construction, the materials, what you need to use or worry about. And this other one's a Polar Max too. And they're not too heavy. But I'll probably take one of those with me on a five-day backpacking trip, maybe two. Okay, so that's my base layer you're looking at. Pretty simple, huh? Um, but once you sweat, and it's really important when it starts cooling down that you dry off quickly. If you don't, you're going to chill to the bone, and you're going to be very uncomfortable. Sweat management is one of the most important principles of backpacking that I'll be stressing with you guys as years go, goes on. And you experienced backpackers that are watching this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Speaking of cooling down, once I get a stop backpacking, I'm at my bivouac site, then I'll layer up, you know, as it gets cooler. Again, I go with a synthetic. A good option would be the windproof fleece. I think, like the wind challenger, I think is, this is called. Again, by, how you doing? 
L.L. Bean. Got my name on there, so I'm not showing you that. But this is a black variety. Uh, probably a little bit on the heavy side for backpacking, truth be told. I do often go with just normal 300 weight Polar Tech fleece. But there's something to be said for windproof fleece. And all kinds of makers make it. REI, L.L. Bean, Cabela's, you know, Patagonia. It's all good. You really can't go wrong as long as they have a Polar Tech brand fleece. I love Polar Tech and it's got a windproof membrane in it. You're good down to freezing. At least I am. If I have this on, plus one of those thermal tops there that I just showed you, you're going to be comfy. Now, if I'm going on a winter camp, i.e. it's snowing, it's going to get like really cold and maybe uh, around zero, heck, not zero, 20 degrees or lower, then I have to change my system. And my system would be, hey, what do you know? L.L. Bean again. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a broken record, but I love their clothing. It's just awesome. And it's, uh, it, they also have expanded sizes, so it fits me. So I wear talls, and L.L. Bean always has talls, unlike a lot of makers. However, this would be a, oh, what is this? Uh, I'll think of the insulation it uses. But this is a snowsuit, both the top and the bottom. This is not for hiking in. This is for when you bivouac at the site. And Prima Loft. It's a Prima Loft insulated suit, snow suit from Ella Bean. No, I wouldn't take the hanger. That's just there. And it's got a built-in hood. Not the smallest, but you can roll it up and pack it into its own pocket. We're talking winter gear. So that's a great winter option. I've had this particular suit and used it extensively for the last 10 years. Um, excellent. Now, if it starts raining, and guess what? It will rain every time. you got to prepare for it. Then I'll put on my Gore-Tex, and I always will take Gore-Tex with me of some sort. I have different models, different jackets I like. This is my medium weight one. It's not the lightest, but it's a Moonstone Gore-Tex jacket. Yeah, it's got a couple holes in it I've had to patch over the years. Just duct tape works fine. Got pit zips on it, so it ventilates well. Doesn't have the fancy dancy waterproof zippers that the newer versions have. I like those. However, they are harder to zip up and down. It's got nice slant pockets for it. Um, it's just nice. And it is actually relatively lightweight. I believe it's two layer Gore Tex. And I've used this one extensively. And you can really batten down the hatches and stay relatively dry. The problem you're going to have is if you're hiking in and if it's raining, you're going to get wet. There's no two ways about it, it's unavoidable. You're just going to get wet. A lot of it will be from your own sweat. And again, we get back to the principle of moisture management, i.e. the moisture that comes off your body. Do your best to ventilate. However, if, when it's raining, you zip these open, water's just going to pour down here and you're going to get your whole side wet. Speaking from experience, that's just the way it is. But once you get bivouac, get your tent set up and stuff, then you can start drying out. Build a fire. Huh. There we go again with the fire thing, and then you have a way to dry your clothing out. All this clothing I'm showing you, however, is synthetic. It's not cotton. You get it near the fire, and it's going to melt like a birthday candle. That's the downside of synthetics. If you're going to be able to fire, you better be very careful how close you get them to the fire, because fire and synthetic clothing does not blend. They just don't get along well together. So there's a couple of clothing items. I have dozens of more options that I can't show you. It's just too much. I may, as the years go by, um, show you as I'm hiking in, showing you what system I'm currently using. But really, I keep it relatively simple, I think, and I don't take any jeans in. You don't see any cotton t-shirts. You don't see any cotton socks. I just won't do that. Um, another clothing item, I think, by the way, that's essential are gaiters. And I don't care where you're going. Even on trail hiking, I'll take gaiters. Uh, these are REI stretchable gaiters. I forget the brand name. I'm sorry, the model. doesn't matter. Just look up. If you're interested in them, you'll see them. The thing I love about these gaiters is they stretch over your boot and snug around your pant leg. Why gaiters? Who needs gaiters? Heck, I'm on the trail. I don't need gaiters. Well, for me, and again, my style of camping, I'm not always on the trail. In fact, I'm frequently off the trail. And I'm bushwhacking into places I want to go, especially when I get to, I don't know, you know, 12,000 or 11,000 feet elevation, maybe not that high, 10,000, 9,000 feet elevation. I want to go exploring. On my GPS, I'm looking at lakes I want to go to, 
so I'm generally off trail. And if you don't wear gaiters, you're going to have a lot of scree and debris getting into your shoes and boots. Not your shoes, but your boots. And that sucks because then you've got stuff that you've got to stop and take out. It's just a pain in the butt. N not to mention in some parts of the country, when, and I've backpacked or hiked pretty much in most of the 50 states in the U.S. And a lot of places um, have a lot of critters that can get in there too. Ticks, fleas. This helps keep them out. Now, if I go wintertime and I'm in deep snow, reference my Cold Steel Adventure video. I have some good pictures there showing you exactly what I'm talking about. Then I'll go with a deeper gator. Huh, what do you know? L.L. Bean again. Why L.L. Bean all the time? Well, one thing, they put their clothes on clearance. Around February, this winter gear goes on clearance. I think I got these for 12 bucks. No, this wasn't a field testable item either. One thing I had to do, though, with these gators is I had to sew the instep strap because it... You can tie it, but it kept coming undone, so I just went ahead and sewed it. You can see I sewed it to a fixed length, and you'll find that that fixed length is not super critical. So those are snow gaiters. They're not Gore-Tex. Don't waste your time on Gore-Tex gaiters. Um, you're not producing that much sweat around your ankles. Don't waste your money. Just a simple, breathable gaiter in temperate climate like these is sufficient. doesn't have to be coated nylon. In fact, I recommend you don't use coated gators until it becomes snowy deep snow and then you can use this this upper portion here is coated nylon coated with a polyurethane so it's waterproof allegedly and then you got a quarter a bottom that's a little bit more rugged okay enough for gators so i totally believe in them totally use them so let's go on that was the clothing down and dirty i'm sure i forgot a lot of things actually i did and that was gloves and amazingly, I've had a lot of emails and PMs about gloves. Dude, what kind of gloves do you like? Um, I don't know if I'm the glove expert. Um, I do dig gloves. They're a very valuable accessory in the backcountry. Um, what I'll take when I go backpacking pretty much always is several pairs of fleece gloves. Here we see a set by REI. And these are made out of Polar Tech brand 300 weight fleece. They're not windproof because the windproof ones are expensive. Um, so at the time, I didn't have the money, so I just went with the regular fleece. I've got a leather palm in there for hiking, and I've actually loved these fleece gloves. They're awesome. And they will get wet, generally speaking. Especially on a winter camp out, you're just going to get them soaked. That's why I carry more than one pair. By the way, they're pretty light. I mean, maybe an ounce. I don't know, maybe an ounce and a half. Uh, depending on the conditions, generally on a regular backpacking trip like I'm talking uh, 30 to 70 degrees is my are my planned temperatures then I'll just take one pair I'll dry them out if I have to if I'm going on a snow winter camp I'll take at least not at least but two pairs and there we see a pair of black diamond these are windproof that I got on clearance I always buy all this stuff out of season in other words when it's on sale from the vendor and that varies from vendor to vendor these I got again at REI as summer was coming on, they got them on clearance. You need to walk to shelves or at least go to the website and scan around. Um, so those are my fleece gloves. And those, after I get to my site and I'm bivouacking, want to keep my hands warm, I like that. When I'm hiking in with my hiking poles, I'll talk about that in a second, I'm using mechanics gloves. These are just regular mechanics gloves. You can buy at an automotive store. I think I bought these in a three or four pack from Costco about six years ago. Unfortunately, Costco doesn't carry them anymore. Bummer. But they're Mechanics brand gloves. Why do I like them? It's because they fit. They fit incredibly. They, they snug up to your hand. You've seen me in some videos already working in the wilderness with them. They're relatively strong. In other words, they're fairly durable. They're suede. I wish they were Amara, which is a synthetic suede. They're not. They're natural suede. As such, they can get wet and stay wet until you dry them out by your fire. But for a hiking glove with your hiking poles, protecting your hands um, in a number of different ways, mechanics gloves are really hard to beat for the money. Once I get to where I'm going, I'm going to do some heavy duty woodwork like fire building, log splitting to find that dry wood which I've talked to you guys about. I use a pair of leather work gloves. Now, do I always take all these gloves on every trip? No, it just depends on what the situation is and what kind of backpacking trip I'm planning on. If I am going into an area that allows fire making, and I indeed figure that I need to do a fire, then guess what? I'll take 
my leather gloves. If I don't take leather, I'll at least have a pair of mechanics gloves. It depends. It just depends if I can take the weight or not. So that's just a little bit of philosophy on gloves and how I'm running them, how I've ran them in the past. And that takes us to the end of part two. Dude, I'm up already. Holy cow, time flies. Uh, when we talk about part three, I'm going to talk, um, tell you a little bit about water filtering and what I'm currently using. Nothing fancy, thanks.